Okay, so what can we do with these um, dream wall neurons and synapses, especially um, trying to make use of these behaviors, the spike time and dependent plasticity and the lateral inhibition behavior. Uh, so this work was done in collaboration with Dr. Christopher Bennett, who is at Sandia National Laboratories. So um, the brain is a largely unsupervised, um, largely unsupervised, is not very well understood how it um, learns, but um, it's very energy efficient. Uh, compared to most machine learning uh, implementations today with CMOS that are usually fully supervised and, and it's well understood, but it can be high energy cost, especially for training. So um, so the supervised learning is usually um, done using bat propagation as the learning method, um, where we have some kind of, so, so we, if you want to say, I recognize some, some image, some digits, then we put in some known digits into our um, crossbar array and we, we tell it whether it's right or wrong. And so we have to go back and um, readjust the weights um, every time. And that's what's very um, power hungry. So here uh, we set out to implement a semi-supervised learning um, that includes spike time independent plasticity, leaking, and winner take all properties. Uh, so uh, we developed a toy model of the synapse and neuron device behaviors, a black box model that we used in MATLAB. And then we implemented this circuit. Um, so we again have the, um, the handwritten digits coming in as input neurons um, through an unsupervised layer where now the synapses are um, MATLAB toy model simulations of the uh, STDP um, dream wall magnetic tunnel junction synapses. And then those will be um, connected to an output dream wall magnetic tunnel junction neuron model, um, which their output signal can then be input into um, a supervised layer. So what we do here is that we start with a random weight of the synapses. And for each MNIST image, uh, we have 784 pixels, so black is zero and white is a voltage, and each pixel is corresponding to an input neuron. Uh, so we're going to send in this random set of MS images, and for a given image, uh, a single output neuron, if it's hard winner-take-all, or a small set of output neurons, if it's soft winner-take-all, the type that we showed in our dream wall simulations, will spike. Uh, so for the unsupervised layer, all we do is we say that if a neuron spikes, then the signal is sent back to strengthen that synapse. And if this neuron doesn't spike, then a signal is sent back to weaken the synapse. So what this is doing is telling us um, which pixels are important for recognizing the image. So even though we don't know what these images are. So in general, for this entire data set, which pixels are most important for recognizing the images? Uh, and so yeah, it filters down the set of pixels. And so um, we end up with, in our um, simulation, an output of um, these reconstructed filter images that don't look like numbers, but they tell us some information about which pixels um, are most important. And so we implemented this using um, analog spike time independent plasticity, our synapse example, and also binary spike time, spike time independent plasticity. So if we have SD, STDP, but we only have two binary states. So the binary type tunnel junction type neuron model. And so you can see how um, we classify the data set over um, time that um, if we have a controlled, a controlled case of random weights, if we have this type of competitive learning, we can get uh, faster classification. And you can see over time what these images, these, um, these um, characteristic images start to look like that tell us which pixels are important. Uh, then, the supervised layer only needs to perform learning on a subset of these neurons. So we can then input a few of the MNIST known images and compare each output signal to a teacher signal of known correct output. If the signal is correct, we leave it as is. If it's incorrect, we send back a voltage pulse to strain or weaken, weaken the synapse. So we only have to do this teaching on a subset and therefore we gain energy efficiency. So um, we find that these results in high accuracy with reduced um, circuit overhead and energy. So we tried to compare a few different types. Um, we have a random type where the weights are um, set randomly in the unsupervised layer. So we don't do this type of teaching in this unsupervised layer. Um, we have binary SCDP, so a binary stochastic MTJ used in the unsupervised layer. 
analog SUDP is um, our type of devices that have analog and SUDP behavior. And then um, also compared to a perceptron, a one-layer neural network with fully supervised learning, and a multi-layer perceptron, so fully supervised learning with many layers, so what machine learning does today. And so um, the results we get are in this, this chart here, where um, the random data set is 78% correct, and we can get up to 92% correct, so um, a, a benefit over just the binary. And that compares to the perceptron of 84%, and a multi-layer can be minus 5 to 98% estimated. This was not simulated, but um, what we gain is that maybe we sacrifice a little bit of accuracy, but for um, not having to do that um, very airy and power-hungry multi-layer perceptron. Um, yeah. And um, you can see our, our further results on um, looking at... Uh, for example, um, varying the coupling constant of the lateral inhibition and looking at the classification accuracy. And here is interesting because we actually find that um, there is um, a, it's actually more beneficial to have a um, soft winner take all than a hard winner take all. So we actually like that not only one neuron wins out, but we can have um, more of the more active neurons win out. And we can also take a look at the classification accuracy for the number of bits available. And also um, here we're looking at um, whether we need greater than four analog weights. And we, we basically find that as long as you have four analog weights or so, we can outperform, ran, outperform random weights. So we don't need um, a ton of weights, but we want four or more. Okay, I will maybe in the interest of time, um, not go through this too much more, but we also find that, for example, clustering is tolerant to TMR variability, and um, it, and it is more affected by random pinning of the domain wall when that's simulated in, in the domain wall model. Okay, so in conclusion, um, we have presented our results on many devices that could address current bottlenecks in computing, and we discussed the um, Leaky integrate and fire, and also the STTP, um, dream well many tunnel junctions, and then look at how they could do semi supervised learning as an example and start to make use of STTP and lateral inhibition. So, I'd like to acknowledge um, my students, Leke San, Thomas Mashid, and then collaborators, um, Joe Friedman, and Christopher Bennett, and Matt Marinella, and um, they all, um, as I showed in the certain portions, we're leading the different parts of the work. So I will end with the conclusions here, and I'm looking forward to our Q&A session. If you have any additional questions, or feel free to send me an email. Thank you again for, uh, if you've gotten to this point, for listening to my talk.